All right. It's a big day for Florida State head coach Mike Norvell and his staff. Uh, it's been a very busy day with Florida State football. Uh, my name is Pat Burnham. I'm joined by Osceola senior writer Kurt Weiler for a special live Saturday night edition of Seminole Sidelines. And uh, listen, uh, Kurt, uh, one, we saw all kind of recruiting fireworks go off. Uh, in July, as Mike Norvell had alluded to, and a lot of Twitter f- posts, and uh, m- might have saved the best for last. Uh, uh, well, it may not be over, but certainly this was a big one for Florida State. Uh, yeah, I, it, I mean, it, to me, this is the the biggest recruiting win of, of Mike Norvell's FSU tenure. I mean, he has proven at times he's capable of at least getting into conversation with these elite guys, and obviously – we need to put the caveats there, the four months, but that sure felt final. That sure. I mean, big ceremonies like that often feel fairly final. And I mean, it's a big deal for Florida state because that's a kid. I mean, it's a top 10 kid in the class who lives about an hour away from Georgia. And I mean, now he is in Florida state's class. He, I think uh, just talking about, I mean, who wouldn't want to take their dream school back to the top is I think kind of his quote coming out of that. And I think that's kind of what I've, put Florida state over the top, over Georgia, over Alabama, over Ohio state, over, I mean, everybody, let's be real. Everybody wanted that kid. It's about who, who KJ Bolden would give the time of day to. And I mean, he ended up giving it to, to Florida state more than anybody else. Yeah. And as you alluded to earlier, that got one of the stranger things is Florida state uh, did not get an official visit. <laughs> Well, um, we're expecting that, I would say, for probably Miami weekend. Yeah, you haven't heard yeah. that definitively, but if I had to bet, yeah. It's, I mean, Georgia used no official visit. Ohio State, who I think there was a time where it would look like it was going to be in a Georgia-Ohio State battle. I think uh, you really look at that two-day unofficial visit he took back in, when was that? That was in June to Florida State, and he kind of said all the right things at that time, but you kind of didn't know what to make of it. But even from then, it felt like, I mean, the fam- familiarity he grew with with Pat Sertan, the new DBs coach, he was kind of meeting more for the first time. And obviously, I mean, he got asked why right after and talked about Mike Norvell. I mean, that is a Mike Norvell. It was a whole staff recruitment, but that starts at the top. And that was a, a, a statement, a, a Florida statement, if you will, by Mike Norvell about what he can do in terms of his recruiting acumen. Yeah, and, and as Fish and I allude to all the time, uh, don't pay attention to what recruits say, although we did parse some of his words early in the week where he mentioned the school being south of home and, you know, could that be Auburn? Could You know, Auburn and obviously Florida State were really the only ones south of his home, so we were parsing words early in the week. But he had alluded many times that Florida State was his dream school coming up, and then obviously his actions on the number of official visits that he took to get down here to Tallahassee, uh, including a two-day stay back in April. Uh, And I think he was – he might have been back for the spring game. I was not here for the spring game, so you could probably fill us in better than that. But, listen, uh, he is the highest-rated player Florida State has signed for people that are big into stars and rankings and position uh, rank rankings. And he's, I believe, uh, one of the – I think number three – safety in America. Uh, but uh, no, number one, number three overall yeah. prospect in the state of Georgia yeah. and number nine prospect overall in the, in the country. And he bumps Florida state's recruiting rate ranking up. They've already adjusted it. Florida state moves up from the ninth best class in America to the sixth best, best class. And uh, listen, what a way uh, to start camp and what a way, what news for Mike Norvell and his staff as they uh, walked off a, uh, their third practice of the season. And, uh, you know, you look at his film, and I've mentioned it in – we have a uh, – we have uh, evaluations from uh, Charles Fishbein and myself in an article we just posted at theosceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com. Uh, but, you know, uh, sometimes you w- watch these guys, you go back and look at their ratings, and uh, sometimes you think, well, whoa, that guy's well uh, overrated or underrated. And, uh, listen, uh, this guy, you watch his film, and he's got – Um, everything you're looking for in a defensive back, particularly safety. He covers a lot of ground. He's got great size and length at 6'2", 180, uh, closes on the ball extremely well, has good instincts in the secondary, and you watch him play wide receiver, and you can watch him run away from people. It's going to be hard for uh, receivers run away from him. He's got great ball skills. You notice that. Uh, And, listen, a tremendous get. Uh, you know, uh, going into this morning, I think 75 of the, of the 75% of the picks on the Rivals Network had him going to Georgia. Uh, we had picked him. Uh, Fish has been uh, a little bit – he got a little bit on the bandwagon quicker than I did. He said several weeks out. 
uh, that Bolden would be at Florida State. Uh, and as we've we've heard him talk to more media people over the course of the last several weeks, uh, you kind of got a feeling that this was coming down to Florida State and Georgia. And then you listen to the kid talk about his love for the, the uh, uh, Florida State University. And then obviously, as you mentioned, Kurt, his, uh, his relationship with Mike Norvell and uh, – what a talented secondary they are putting together in this 2024 class with Charles Lester, Ricky Knight, Rodarius Morgan, and uh, CJ Hurd. And uh, then you got uh, BJ Gibson that could play DB. You got LaWayne McCoy who could play corner, uh, although we were expecting both those guys to be at receiver. But, uh, you know, listen, a huge get for Florida State, a huge get for the program. And uh, listen, uh, you and I talked about it before uh, this afternoon. Uh, the fact that they've been able to go against Georgia for Jonathan Daniels, Charles Lester, Cam Davis, and now uh, uh, KJ uh, says a lot about what they got, what they've got going on, and uh, just kind of where where have you seen Florida State's recruiting go? I mean, obviously you're working for the Democrat, you followed them for a long time. You, we've all been here for the four years. Mike has been here. Just what have you seen Mike and his program do from a recruiting standpoint since they've gotten here? Yeah, frankly, I think, I mean, Mike DeRoe kind of got a raw deal when he started out in that. I mean, I think often with, I and mean, we've seen it really with Florida and Miami recently, even when the on-field success isn't good, new coaches kind of benefit from what I call the, the new coach smell, where they get to sell before having to kind of prove, oh, look, I can grow a program. They get to sell what that vision is and kind of, and that's often a big deal. You often see a bump with a, a new coach. Well, what, three, four months into Mike Norvell's tenure, the coronavirus pandemic happened and and shut down in-person recruiting for over a year, I think for about 15 yeah. months. And yeah. so, I mean, that is valuable time they lost out on. And one thing we said about Mike Norvell when he was hired, didn't have a ton of Florida ties, especially on the staff he assembled, except for kind of the guys they retained. Didn't have a ton of Georgia ties. That's kind of, I mean, it, yep. he was going to have to build those ties. And he and his staff have no doubt worked perilously. I mean, I think, this staff has proven they're very good at finding diamonds in the rough. I look yep. at a Luke Cromanhawk who hadn't started a high school game when they offered him and got him to commit. And he's now, I think, I mean, going to end up one of the higher rated QBs in the class, but now they're proven. I mean, they can win these big boy recruitments that if you're at a place like Florida state and you want to reach that ceiling, you have to win. You have to bring in KJ Bolden types. Yep. You have to bring in Charles Lester types. You have to bring in and maintain guys like Cam Davis flip guys like Landon Thomas from Georgia. I mean, it, I'm by no means drawing a line entirely between the two. This feels like some of those early recruitments in Jimbo's tenure where he kind of really went out and got some dogs who kind of Florida State it won some kind of similarly big recruitments against those top yep. programs. And it's uh, it, it has taken him a little while. And there are, like I said, understandable reasons why. But I think he is proving his acumen, his, his staff's acumen as a, as a recruiter. Yeah, and listen, I, I think that what these recruits, the recruits that we are seeing commit to Florida State, the Charles Lester's of the world, KJ Bolden's, Jonathan Daniels, that had offers from programs that are in the uh, college football playoff picture year in and out, uh, certainly says a lot. That 10 win season says, I think it tells the kid a lot about the potential of this program and what it can do under Mike Norvell. We've always said that winning is your biggest attraction as from a recruiting standpoint. The uniforms are nice. The relationships are nice. But at the end of the day, winning is what draws kids to your campus. And Mike Norvell and his staff winning and the relationships. And, you know, we alluded to it today. Uh, there is a we we hear it way too much around college football, but there's really a family atmosphere at Florida State. And we have seen that trickle down to the recruits and their families here in 2020 with his 2024 class with Cam Davis's mom and Cam and Luke and his family and uh, the kind of helping recruit these other players. And within Cam Davis, uh, second week in a row, Florida State has had a committed kid at another recruits commitment announcement. Luke was at Charles Lester's announcement. Now you had Cam at KJ's. Uh, just talk a little bit about how you feel Jerry and Kurt, about how you feel that family atmosphere trickles down into the recruiting experience. Jerry, I think it's probably been a long time since you've seen that on the Florida State campus. Hey, I wanted to uh, join the party here, if you guys don't mind. <laughs> this is pretty exciting. I, my phone's just been blowing up. I've gotten calls from everybody from 
the athletic department on down. Uh, this is uh, really exciting news. Uh, Pat, I, I think winning is a big thing. Uh, absolutely. I think the family atmosphere is a big thing. But I'll still maintain the co-eds on the Florida State campus are uh, undefeated. <laughs> well, that's, that has been a truism for a long, long time. <laughs> I think winning was it's, it's it's part of the reason, team. Jerry, I tried to stay in college through my entire 20s, decade of my 20s. <laughs> Particularly in this case, I think winning was a big deal. I mean, yeah. the, the, the jokes aside, because he, I think uh, to get a guy like that, I think he wanted kind of an excuse to come to Florida State to be interested in Florida State clearly. I mean, with the dream school and all. CJ Hurd, actually, I'll try and screen share it. CJ Hurd, who was there tonight as well, FSU DB commit, posted a picture of him and KJ in Florida State's IPF just now. From, right. It looks like when they were probably like 10 years old. Yeah, it's uh, listen. Uh, it's a it's a big night for listen. Here's 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 but, but how Mike, crazy here's how crazy it is, guys. We are three days into camp. And this ten and three football team with has huge aspirations of playing for an ACC title and maybe a college football playoff spot has not been the story. It's been college football expansion and KJ Bolden. I, I tell you, I prefer this to realignment. I prefer yeah. talking about this to realignment. Yeah, I'm with you there, but uh, it is crazy. Uh, you know, listen. There's obviously a lot of excitement. There's going to be a lot of excitement around the program, as Jerry said. I actually got a uh, text from campus that asked me, "Has KJ committed yet?" <laughs> so, uh, and I was able to break the good news to that person. <laughs> I got I got a call from uh, uh, the chairman of the Seminole Boosters, and he was in a van with Michael Alford and. <laughs> And some other people, and man, they were having a party in that band. <laughs> yeah, that party just got ratcheted up a couple it, more shots. It, it, it sounded like Charles Lester's commitment ceremony. Yeah, it, it was definitely. Uh, hey, so, listen, uh, this, I think you know the relationship thing is big to get serious here a minute, uh, get over my exuberance. But, um, you know, Mike's just done a great job of building a team that I think, you know, who wouldn't want to play? for the culture that he's developed. We were talking about it at practice today, the three of us. You see, uh, after a drill is over, it doesn't matter who won the drill, whether it was a defensive back beating a, a receiver or an offensive lineman beating a defensive lineman, the players talk to each other afterwards and help each other. I mean, this is about the most unselfish team I've been around, and this is my 42nd fall camp i just i think mike has built a culture that's very attractive yep no winning winning was a big deal in this recruitment for sure i think i mean showing him that he can do big things here you know what else i think was a big deal another tweet i just saw on twitter florida state was the first school to offer kj bolden in the middle of the pandemic in like july 2020 before he was ranked, before he was a five star, before he was a three star, seven minutes, before, seven months before Georgia, who's he's right in their hometown. He's an hour away. And that's always going to mean something. I think that is always going to mean something. And that, I mean, we talked about the the diamond in the rough of it all. That speaks to what this staff can do in that regard, too. Kurt, yeah. to your point, let's go back to that COVID year 2020. Mike had just arrived here, they weren't allowed on the road. And we were all yep. worrying. Let's all be honest with each other. Could they recruit? Could they develop the relationships? You know? Um, and while we were worrying about it, they went out and made an offer to him before Georgia did. You know, sometimes the things we worry about aren't worth worrying about. But, well, uh, and, and we, to go back to your point, yeah, uh, the work spoke for itself, right? The work in, on the tr recruiting trail with KJ and then the work Mike and his staff have done on the field to rebuild this program. And, guys, this – I mean, uh, I don't want to overstate this or understate it, but when the program that he took over was devoid of talent and what he has done, you talk about Kurt, the COVID year. Uh, for a first-year coach, it was hard on everybody, but for a first-year coach, which Mike was one of about eight that year, that was a tremendous handicap in getting your your coaches established with high school coaches around your area. And you could, with that, with Buford being about five hours, you, I mean, that's in your the area of your school, really. I mean, you, about five to six hours, you put that five or six-hour radius around your school. Uh, so I think, uh, I think 
it just shows you. Uh, I think we we talked a little bit about this uh, coming out of last season. Is he was is Mike ahead of schedule or behind uh, ahead of schedule or not because of COVID? And I think we all agreed he's a, ahead of schedule and we, uh, on the field. And now it seems like they have now gotten ahead of schedule or up to speed on the recruiting trail. So Mike Norvell talks about his program. He builds it around climb, climb, keep climbing, all things of that sort. How's this for a climb? I wrote a column coming out of June when there was some frustration about Florida State recruiting after they were leaving the month of June, a month with a ton of visits, a ton of activity around campus, but no commitments. They were 27th in the rivals class rankings. That was uh, June 30th. Yep. It's now August 5th. And with the addition of KJ Bolden, they are sixth in the country. No, yep. that yep. is a well, climb if I've ever seen one. And listen, mm -hmm. You know, there were kids that were making commitments in June to other places, and I think that pe got people, you know, we saw Zandamella go to USC, and then a TD went to USC, and, you know, uh, the uh, Plaz committed to Penn State, then decommitted, and those are all guys that were high on Florida State's offensive line board, and obviously they flipped a TT. Uh, he's now committed. Uh, and listen, here's the other thing. A guy like K.J. Bolden has the ability to attract other recruits. Uh, and so uh, this may, and I'm not saying that it will, but we have seen kids that want to follow and go play with other kids. And I, I think there's probably some of that going on within this class that Florida State is putting together. But it would not surprise me if you see Florida State get into some, get onto some other kids because of KJ, because you know it, it buys you credibility, right? When you get one of those big name guys, and then. Kurt, you've already uh, mentioned today when we were at practice that this could impact uh, Mike Norvell's 2025 class because you said Jaden Perlot came out and has said that he wants to follow where KJ goes. He is a five-star linebacker 2025 class who also plays at Buford, is, is KJ's teammate. And you understand why you might want to follow. He's committed to Georgia right now, and, and you got time. That's not a, a rush on that one. He's got, what, 16 months until the early signing period for him. Yep. But, yeah, it is. I, it feels like a – more than even some of the other ones. I mean, flipping Landon Thomas was a big deal. He's not a five-star for us. He is in some other recruiting services. Whether he's a four, a high four-star or a five, he's a great recruit. This feels like a resonation on a on another on another level. I think nationally. I think this is a putting Florida State, putting kind of the country, putting the Southeast on notice about hey, Florida State might be Florida State and again on the recruiting trail. Yeah, well, listen, they uh, certainly are. Uh, it's been uh, a heck of a summer for Mike Norvell. Listen, uh, I hear it all the time from their staff, whether it's on social media or when I talk to them, hard work works. And we have said multiple – and we know because we're there almost every weekend that they have kids on campus or every day they have kids on campus, this staff works at recruiting. And when you work at it the way they do and you have you give up all these weekends to bring these kids on unofficial visits, we saw it almost every day, every weekend in June, and almost every day in June. Uh, we saw it in uh, April uh, at, during spring practice. You saw it in January with multiple weekends of unofficial visits. Uh, and then you couple that with what they're doing on the field and the expectations around this program, it goes a long way in bringing a kid like K.J. Bolton uh, to, your, uh, to, to your team, to your roster. That being said, we all have high expectations for this upcoming season. It puts some pressure on that because you have talked a big oh, yeah. talk and understandably so about how good. I think I'm not even sure they've talked that much, honestly. I think a lot of people, us, others have talked about how, to, how good we think this 2023 Florida State team can be. You don't want to underachieve that because that's the one thing that might throw some things. I think a lot of the guys are locked in, but you just don't even want to open the possibility of right. – someone be able to come in and say, well, they're not having the 10-win season you thought they would or whatever. You don't want to open the door for any negative recruiting because, like we've said, there are still four months. Well, it's, it's there's no doubt that Florida State is in a great place with every one of, single one of these kids. And as you alluded to, Kurt, now it's about getting to the finish line, right? And as you just said, part of that finish line – is to live up to expectations on the field. Uh, and we think that, listen, we all walked away from practice today. Again, we, we, we're, we all notice different things at practice, but we're all, we, when we come together, we all see things differently. We're, you know, as Jerry alluded to, these guys seem to like to compete against each other, seem to like helping make each other better. It seems to be a team devoid of, huge egos and with a common goal. And uh, listen, and those, and those, those, we can't discount this. These prospects, when they come in town, whether it's unofficial visits or official visits, they get a chance to hang around these players that are currently on the roster and that, and kids talk uh, that, you know, it's just like, 
I, when I'm around, around my brother's house and I got my four or five year old niece running around, whatever she says is going to be the truth, whether you like it or not. And when these kids come on campus for official visits and talk to the current players, these players tell them what their experience is like and what the realities of playing at Florida State and for Mike Norvell and for Adam Fuller and for Alex Atkins and all these position coaches. So clearly, uh, not only is the buy in. Uh, there's a buy-in from the current players because they are helping attract these kids to Florida State along with the coaching staff. And I think that it has a lot to do with the kind of camaraderie that we see when we go out and watch a practice. I, I, I This is a good point by, by Sanders. I mean, it's a point well taken. We've been there with. I mean, I, am I allowed to say Travis Hunter now? I feel like with a, a, a win like this, I know it's, he hasn't signed on the dotted line yet, but you can kind of start to move past those, exercise those those demons a little bit. Yeah, well, I think I mean it, it's it, it's uh, significant. Where I mean, obviously, you'd rather be in this position than be the ones trying to flip. I don't think George is going to go away. I know Adam Gorney already has a story on the on the site uh, that he talked to KJ before he announced. I think it came down to kind of like last night. Like I think as late as last night this morning, he was still going back and forth between Florida State and Georgia. I don't expect Georgia to go away by any means. I mean, it's it, heck his quarterback for this next year who just transferred in is Georgia's. Georgia's 2024 quarterback commit, Dylan Rayola. So he's going to be, I imagine, in his ear. But but it, 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 I would encourage people not to try to not think this way. And you just gotta, you know. Do not borrow trouble. It's, <laughs> listen, that, that this people, all right, the recruiting okay, process. Now. The recruiting process never stops, okay? But for people that have never worked inside the business, it never stops. Florida State is going to continue. There's probably going to be a handful of kids that are committed to other schools that Florida State's going to try to flip. There's probably some guys they really want. And the same thing is going to be said for some of the kids on Florida State's committed a list. That are going to, it doesn't stop. That's why the National Signing Day is not until December 15th, and verbal commitments are non-binding, as we all know. But, yeah, I don't think – I don't. I think tonight, if you're an FSU fan, celebrate the win – you did win. You beat Georgia tonight. You beat Alabama tonight. You beat Auburn. You beat Ohio State. Uh, now you have to fend, fend them off for the next four months. And as you know, listen, he seen KJ Bolden has, seems to have a great relationship with his staff. And obviously, uh, what he's you know he said in an interview last week that he likes the detailed plan that Florida State has for how they plan to use him when he gets here. I believe, if I recall correctly, and I may not, but I believe that is the only school out of the five that he was interviewed about that he said that about. Now, he said a great relationship with Kirby. He said he has a great relationship with Mike. Uh, but the one thing he did say was that he really uh, liked the detailed uh, plan that Florida State has for him as a football player once he gets here. And uh, as I've said, and as you'll read in uh, our, our evaluation by Charles Fishbein and I, uh, there's nothing you don't like about this kid on film. I mean, there's, uh, there's, you don't, as Kurt uh, Fish said in his write up, I dare you to try to find a something wrong with this kid on film. And uh, I think he's right. I mean, uh, I'll reemphasize what I said. Uh, his ranking matches up, his ranking and ratings match up with his film. He's clearly one of the best players and the uh, at any uh, out of all the positions and obviously he's ranked ninth overall in the country as a as a recruit so uh listen big night for florida state uh probably some bigger things yet to come but uh as exciting as july was with all the commit uh, announcement of commitments to florida state uh they're all going to be important when they get here right but th uh because of this was so widely publicized and so many people thought this was just you know george is going to get him it's you know there's you know, he went to Auburn the last week, uh, July 29th, and people thought maybe Freeze was going to get involved. And Jerry's breaking, drinking a celebratory beer as we speak, although I'm not sure Mickle Ultra counts as beer, but okay. Uh, but anyway, that's, that's, a, that's a different story. Oh, Yingley, I like it, Jerry. Good job. Good job. Jerry's gone with the heavy stuff for uh, KJ's commitment. But, I yeah. got to write a column. I can't, be, I can't be doing that yet. Maybe later. All right. Well, listen, guys, it's a hey, big hey, night for one, Florida one State, thing. a big night for KJ Bolton. And, Jerry, we're going to let you finish this up. Well, I was just going to say, you know, I learned this a long time ago. You got to celebrate the victories when they come, you know. Yep. And and to that, you know, it's enjoy this. Yep. Um, I, you know, in our my tenure, Pat, your tenure, this this run that Mike's got going right now is really special, and I think this put an exclamation point on what we all think we're seeing. Uh, this is a developing program. 
Yes, I'm getting uh, the uh, I'm getting pl- text from former players right now. Marcel <laughs> texting me. Do we really get it? We really get it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, you got Brian, that doesn't Brian, listen, that for, you, for you guys that don't watch us on a regular basis. That is not that does not typically happen with a commitment. We don't have former players coming out of the woodwork saying, "Hey, we really got that kid." What also doesn't really happen a ton with like this felt like an honest. We had hunches, you had your hunches in, but Georgia people felt good. I think even Auburn people kind of felt good. It felt like a true. We don't entirely know what's about to happen. Recruitment, which doesn't happen a ton nowadays. I mean, kudos well, to KJ Bolden. He kept everybody waiting and and not sure exactly what was coming. You guys were with me when I was at practice and texting with the other rival sites, Georgia and Auburn. Georgia thought they had it. I don't think Auburn felt as good, but they certainly didn't think they were out of it. But earlier in the week, Auburn thought they had them. But Georgia thought they were in. They thought they were the team this morning. We do know that. Uh, The Georgia side did. Uh, And of course, I think that's, listen, I, that might have been one of the reasons I picked uh, the, the, the fact that I thought he was coming to Florida State. Other, I mean, I've, I've got, I gave my reasons. What the kid has voiced it and he's uh, acted it out by coming to Florida State's campus multiple times. But yeah, listen, uh, it was high drama. Yeah, it was high drama. And listen, KJ, uh, having been a veteran of these things, uh, especially over the last six weeks, we would like to thank you for a timely announcement and uh, taking care of business and uh, letting everybody know where you were going. And listen, let's not, this was a big night for KJ Bolden, a uh, huge night in his life. Uh, he, this is one of the biggest decisions you can make as a young or an older 17, 18 year old. It's one of the biggest decisions you'll make on your life. It'll have ripple effects uh, for him throughout the, uh, his college career. And obviously, and it leads him and it'll lead him to where he ends up, whether it's NFL or uh, an executive or whatever he wants to do. Uh, but yeah, listen, it's a, it's a big night. So congratulations to KJ and his coaches and his parents, because uh, they, 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 you only get one night like this. And it's a, it's a big night when you're particularly for, I try to go back to my 17 and 18 year old self when I was trying to determine where I was going to school. Although, I had Sanford and Troy, <laughs> not Georgia, <laughs> and uh, Florida State and Auburn. But it's it, it, you know it's a big decision uh, where you decide to sp- spend those four years. And listen, uh, I think it's going to be fascinating to see uh, how this uh, what happens with this recruiting class as we move forward. Uh, I do think that it could bring uh, some attract some more. Uh, players to Florida State because he is one of the more high-profile guys uh, in the Southeast particularly, Uh, and obviously that's where Florida State has done the bulk of its recruiting for the 2024 class. But, yeah, big night for Mike Norvell as they move from the ninth-ranked recruiting class in the country to the sixth-ranked recruiting class in the country. And, boy, when you start looking at that defensive backfield two and three years from now with a Charles Lester and we love red Morgan. And I think he is a, I think, boy, what, I mean, he's still, I don't know. I watched KJ's film again today. Now I've got to kind of figure out who I like better between he and red. <laughs> kind of like them both the same. Kind of like them both the same. But anyway, big night uh, guys. I appreciate you joining me. Uh, this has been a, a big day. Uh, don't forget to go to theosceola.com or floridastate.rivals.com. Check out all our coverage not only of KJ's uh, commitment tonight, but obviously practice today. We've got a live thread from practice, videos, pictures. Uh, big night. A lot going on for Fort with Florida State football. And, boy, do they have some momentum rolling into the season right now. Uh, and, uh, and, listen, uh, as Mike says in his tweets all the time, the future is bright in Tallahassee. And uh, I'm sure that was part of his tweet tonight when KJ uh, – committed and certainly uh, things are brighter in Tallahassee as in regards to the 2024 recruiting class for Florida state. All right, guys. Well, Kurt, Jerry, we'll go get back to work. We got practice on Monday. We got a lot to write about. So, uh, Hey, uh, if you're not a subscriber to the Osceola, please go to the Osceola.com or Florida state.rivals.com. We do have some free content that's not behind the paywall. Check us out. Let us know what we do. Live practice reports every day, live video, uh, well, video thread from practice, uh, photo galleries, and then we have practice reports on a daily basis. But uh, I hope everyone has a great Saturday night and Sunday, and we will be back with Seminole Sidelines on Monday, probably not at 1230, probably later because we'll be at practice. Practice moves from 
three o'clock, three forty-five in the afternoon, nine o'clock in the morning on Monday. So we will be changing things up uh, again. But again, appreciate everybody watching. Appreciate the comments and appreciate Jerry and Kurt jumping on on such short notice. And uh, please go to theosceola.com and check us out. Have a great night.